Hi, I'm Sarah Gaudio. I'm the co-founder, curator, and creative director here at Curious Cannabis Company. It was a lot of things. From the moment the government said, yeah, we're going to do legalization, I had ideas about what I wanted to experience as a cannabis consumer. I used to have hours long conversations with friends about like, you know, what, what should that look like? What do we hope it looks like? What do you want to do with it? Um, obviously I didn't do it right away. And what ended up sort of being the catalyst to actually doing it was helping my mother navigate medicinal cannabis and realizing that even in that um, part of the industry, there was a lot of opportunity for education that was missing for her. I was doing a lot more for her in helping her navigate this than the nurses she was dealing with. And that was the thing that pushed me to say, you know what, maybe I need to do this for real. Maybe I need to create the cannabis store that I want to see for all of the people like my mom. I spend a lot of time listening to other people and paying attention to the industry and keeping an ear to the ground for who's doing great work. Who's new to the industry and doing something interesting? Who's coming up next? How are they growing? What is everyone else or you know the people I respect saying about them? Um, so it's just, it's always keeping an ear open for small growers and then taking the steps to get to know them and find out what makes them special. Why is their product so good? How are they growing it? How are they curing it? What does that process look like? So, I mean, I think you can probably see right off the bat, my store looks very different. Um, aesthetically, I created a space that is intended to disarm you. It's meant to make you feel relaxed and safe and warm. But more than that, the experience that you will have when dealing with the bud tenders here is much more hands-on. We are not a store where we expect anyone to come in with knowledge. That's our job. I do tend to favor non-irradiated product. I know there are growers who would argue with me and say that irradiation doesn't have an impact on the quality of the flower. I'm not going to say that everything I carry is not irradiated, but I do go out of my way to look for growers who are putting in the care and love to their grow so that they know that they can confidently take a product to market without irradiation. I mean, it's hard because it's so like... I have to just like it. I, it has to, you know, I grow as well. I, I was taught to grow by a very talented legacy market grower. And as a grower, I know what good weed feels like and looks like and smells like. Um, so I'm always bringing that to the table and I'm always getting into, getting into the weeds, <laughs> as they say. I mean, so the biggest thing that I would say helps in terms of uh, keeping abreast of what's new and what's next is really being involved in the community. Um, whether that's through my work on the board of the Retail Cannabis Council of Ontario or just being on social media and going to events, I really try to keep an eye on the people I respect the most and the people that I know are either innovating or know what they're talking about because those folks are always going to be on the cutting edge of the industry. They're always going to know what's next. They're always going to be hyping up what's good, what's exciting. So that is really the, I think the most interesting thing about this industry is the community component because without that, I think that a lot of this industry wouldn't work quite right. Because we're a family business, we're really on the floor every day and talking to each other every day. So we do have a very one-to-one -one relationship with our community and with our neighbors. So, you know, if someone comes to us with an issue, we hear that and we take that to heart. If someone comes to us and says, hey, 
there's something I'm looking for and you don't have it. Well, great, that's an easy fix to make, right? We tend to carry a lot of brands that you might not see at other stores. So that means that almost every interaction we have here involves some level of, hey, I hear you're looking for that. Can you tell me what it is you like about that? And I'm gonna tell you what I have that's gonna meet your needs. Um, so it is very, very involved in the way we approach uh, customer service here. But I will say that nine times out of 10, that customer comes back and says, hey, I had never heard of that product before, but it is way better than the thing I thought I wanted. What else you got? Right now, we are a pickup point for Food Printer Labs for their holiday boxes. Uh, food Printer Labs is an incubator for black owned food businesses. So we're supporting small businesses in Toronto through being a pickup location for them. Um, and furthermore, we have recently uh, started an initiative locally here called the Rail Path District. Uh, we are a BIA list, nothing neighborhood right now. So working together with my fellow local business owners and some community members, we are creating a community group to help bolster business in the area. I co-announced that uh, Chains can now own 150 stores instead of 75. And it's like, you know, uh, when you're up against giants like that, there are ways that you're never gonna be able to compete, you know? Like I'm never gonna be able to compete on price, but I will always be able to compete on curation and customer service. I will always be able to do better on experience. Uh, you know, marketing broadly is always gonna be a challenge with the uh, laws we have against promotion in Canada. I do understand their place and necessity, but it's really hard to educate the public and help them understand the differences between uh, legal and gray market when, you know, the laws essentially say that if you say anything, it's promotion. Oh man, plus the whole federal restriction in the States, like Google won't take my ad dollars, neither will Meta, like I don't wanna give Elon my money, so what am I left with? Porn and gambling sites. Like that actually isn't most of my customers, so yeah. I mean, changes come so slowly, you know? Um, I, I mean, the work that I do on the board of the RCCO uh, definitely puts me ahead of the curve on what changes are coming, um, and particularly because I'm actively advocating for them. Yeah, you just gotta listen to your regulators. We all have inspectors who, I mean, mine's super great. He is really reasonable and all about a conversation. So ultimately, you know, your regulators are your partners when you are a cannabis retailer. And if you just treat them as a partner, you're gonna be able to stay compliant. Yeah, you just gotta listen to your regulators. We all have inspectors who, I mean, mine's super great. He is really reasonable and all about a conversation. So ultimately, you know, your regulators are your partners when you are a cannabis retailer. And if you just treat them as a partner, you're gonna be able to stay compliant.